Orthographic projections are used to represent 3D components on a flat surface in a 2D form. The two main types of orthographic projection are first angle and third angle. We will focus on third angle. In third angle projection, three views are usually used to indicate the shape of an object fully. A plan, P, a front view, F, and a right side view, R. Complex shapes can require a left side view, L. This is paper over the top of a grid which you can see underneath. These are marked out in intervals, one, two, three, four, five, six squares. The shape that we're drawing is six by six by six. We are going to draw the plan view, that is this one. When we look down, these are the faces that we will see. We're looking at the front, and so we'll see this, this, and this shape. So that's the L shape is there, and then behind it, we've got this shape, which is coming up to one, two, three, four units. L shape is here, this back shape, this rectangle is here, and this shape on top is this one. So that's the front. Outside edge is here, and here. We're going to take from those and we're going to project them up at 45 degrees. And we're going to call these swing lines. Now, all of the heights we have here, we're going to project here and down. And this is the view that we will have of the right. So this is the shape that we need to pr principally focus on. That distance is on an inclined plane. In this direction. And we can see at the plan looking in that direction, we can see all of this and we can see a tiny bit of this.
I know that this back edge, even though it's staggered, it's all on the back line. And it's going to be a mirror of this one, so we're going to go with that one. If we're looking in that direction at this area, this shape here, we can start at the bottom. So that's 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 one unit thickness, and that's one unit thickness. So I can put that in. So this continuous shape is this plus this. And then when it looks about right, and only then do you ink it in, if you need to. If you don't need to, because you've done it, and that's the inked in version. This is an orthographic drawing of typical components drawn for fabrication. The front elevation shown as detail 1 includes a section, cut through points shown with arrows at AA. Underneath the elevation is the view seen from section AA, showing greater detail of the assembly. These drawings are not to scale, but are drawn in correct proportion. This drawing demonstrates how a plan relates to elevations and particularly two sections cut through a structure shown as AA. and BB. Section AA and BB show how these sections look as elevations. These are concept drawings only, but they show how the combined view should be read spatially. There are two ways of calculating true lengths, and they are the right angle triangle method and the compass method. We will look first at the right angle triangle method. The illustration shows a line inclined in plan at 30 degrees to the projection plane and in elevation at 45 degrees to the projection plane. To calculate the line's true length, measure the distance that point 2 is from the projection plane in plan. This distance is shown here as D. Then, in elevation, project a right angle from point 2 and, using a compass, transfer the distance, which is D, from plan onto the line projected from point 2 to give you D1. Line 1 to 2A is a true length. The alternative way to get the same result is to transfer D from elevation to plan to form distance D1 on line 2 to 2A. Line 1 to 2A is a true length. Now we'll look at the compass method using a fresh example of a line inclined in both plan and elevation. Taking line 1 to 2 in elevation as a radius, use a compass to draw an arc until it strikes the projection plane. Project this point vertically to intersect the projection plane in plan and mark this intersection with a dot, shown in the diagram as point 2A. Draw a line in plan from point 1 to the dot, and this is your true length. The alternative way to get the same result is to take line 1 to 2 in plan as a radius, and using a compass, draw an arc until it strikes the projection plane. Project this point vertically down to intersect the projection plane in elevation, and mark this intersection with a dot, shown in the diagram as point 1A. Draw a line in elevation from point 2 to 1A. This is your true length. An understanding of the true length of line and true shape is essential to be able to draw the development of a roof. A development is a drawing of a component that can be folded to assemble into a 3D object typically fabricated in sheet metal. The shape should be designed so that the joining edge 
figure 1.1a in the example, is the shortest, hence a short length of weld or riveting is necessary. True lengths of all edges must be known to complete a development. We are going to plot the development of a truncated pyramid shown here in plan and elevation. The true lengths of line 1 to 1a and 2 to 2a are calculated in the diagram using the compass method. The true length of the sides of the pyramid can be found by using the compass method on side 2. Taking the true length of one of the sides of the pyramid as the radius, draw a long arc with a compass. This should then be subdivided with small arcs that are the true length of line 1 to 2. Remember that all lines in the square base of the pyramid are the same length. Join up the arcs with straight lines and number the outside edges. This is the complete pyramid in development. The next stage is to plot the lengths of line of the truncated shape. So starting with line 1 to 1a, take its true length with a compass from the elevation and mark this onto the pyramid. Line 1 to 1a is the same length as line 4 to 4a, so mark these lines with the same compass measurement. Next, take the true length of 2 to 2a and mark this on the development and use this measurement for 3 to 3a, which is the same length as 2 to 2a. Then, ink in the lines.